Let's start with our co-main event in the middleweight division. Up first to the stage, the most intimidating force the UFC has ever seen. An undefeated Fina, who has finished 11 of his 12 wins. Fighting in front of this Abu Dhabi crowd for the fourth time in seven UFC fights. Looking to cement himself as the number one contender at 185 pounds. Ladies and gentlemen, Hamza Horz Chemayev. And his opponent, one of the greatest welterweights to ever step foot in the UFC. Now he's moving up a division to try and add another title to his resume. Stepping up on less than two weeks' notice to prove he is the new force of the 185-pound division. The greatest welterweight of all time. Please welcome to the stage, the Nigerian nightmare, Kamaru Usman. to our banger of a main event. Up first, a rematch between the two best pound-for-pound -pound fighters in the world. It takes a special breed to take this fight, and in the manner in which way the featherweight champion did. But he's a truly elite fighter in every sense of the word. He is one of the most dominant and well-rounded fighters the sport has ever seen. Give it up for the reigning featherweight champion of the world, Alexander the Great. Standing across the octagon, the standard at 155 pounds. He comes into Saturday night on a 12-fight win streak and hasn't lost a fight in over eight years. Now he looks to silence the doubters. One of the most dominant lightweight fighters the UFC has ever seen. Ladies and gentlemen, put your hands together for Dagestan's own Islam. What's up, Abu Dhabi? How are you guys? Good to be back here. Thanks for coming out today. Love you too, brother. <laughs> Who's got the first question? This is a question for Islam Mahaja. First of all, how good does it feel to be back in Abu Dhabi and repaying the favor of fighting in enemy territory against Alex? Oh, feel great. Look at the people. They're all on my side now. Man, last time, last time in Australia, brother. Everything is changed. Everything is changed. Islam, he needs all the advantages he can get. That's all he thinks about. I don't need none of that. I've got these. That's all I worry you about. You don't man. need. I need this, brother. I rely on my skills, not crowds, not nothing. Everybody know what you need. Just money. That's it. Islam, actually, I'd like to ask you about that. Yesterday, you said you felt that Alex was just here for a payday. Do you not believe he's here to try and really win that belt? Man, what he put? Nothing. He just come to make money. He not brings his belt. He j I have. I put my win streak. I put my belt. I'm gonna be here. Be before I am here, he never be champion in my division. Hey, one thing I will say, say about that. I don't know what mentality or mindset he has. I want to avenge my losses. You know what I mean? That it, it burns me when I. You know what I mean? I didn't get my hand raised. That hurts me. Now I have to do it on 12 days' notice. You and I'm okay say, with that. I accept that and I'm ready to put on a show. You have to say thanks to me. I can choose some any other opponent. We have Gamrod, we have Poirier. Everybody ready for a fight to the belt. But I give you second time chance. But everyone wants this rematch anyway, so we're going to put on a show. You. Just say thank you. That's it. Islam, you said in that first fight you... Uh, he didn't really appreciate how good he could be. So what was the biggest thing you learned from that first fight? Man, of course he is good. If you want to finish him or if you have to beat him, he never give up. He gonna fight five rounds. Doesn't matter how many days short is or it's nothing means. He's gonna fight. That's why we will show best fight again. We're gonna show good fights for all the people who are waiting for. For you, Alex, when you hear the things he's saying about you're here for the paycheck and stuff. Do you feel like he's underestimating you again? Uh, no, I don't think that. I think he, he obviously, he just said, he knows I ain't going to give up. He knows that I'm a professional and I turn up every single time. You know, I believe I'm one of the best fighters in the world. You know, I believe I am the best fighter in the world. So I'm happy to do that. I can step in the, in the training room whenever I want and expect a, a good performance out of myself. Yeah, a lot's on the line here, 
But hey, we get to put on a show for everyone around the world, everyone here in Abu Dhabi, and I can't wait for it. You've both said that you're going to come out and really push for the finish this time. Do you think this will be a technical fight, or can you see this being a firefight in the middle where someone gets a finish early? I mean, it's going to, obviously, there's going to be a lot of skill involved, but hey, it's, I've made it clear. They know, they know what's happening. Like, I ain't here to play it safe. I can't afford to play it safe. I'm going in for the kill, and that's it. You know what I mean? So it's kill or be killed, you know, and, and that's that. Islam, for you, how does this fight finish, and how different is it from the first time round? The uh, first time, many things happened before the fight, but now it, everything is changed. You can ask them, ask Dana, tell the people who is the beginning in the scale that time. Everything is changed now, and I'm going to try to finish him because after last fight, we have many questions. Everything I will finish here. All answers is going to be Saturday night. Pressure for Kamaru Usman. Kamaru, not only have you stepped in on late notice to take this fight, now it feels like people are trying to give you injuries that you might not even have. <laughs> there was this viral clip that went around yesterday. I know that you addressed it earlier for the people who don't know. Your knees are fine heading into this fight. <laughs> I'm fine. Um, that's just how rumors start. You know, somebody posts something and then everyone starts jumping on it and then uh, all the doctors start jumping on it. Knees are fine. They will be put to use this Saturday. Yesterday, Hamzat said that he was the new version of you, the iPhone Pro to your iPhone 5. Do you see some similarities in Hamzat to you? Yeah, I mean, he's tough. He can wrestle, he can grapple, he can strike. You know, but like I said yesterday, whether it's a new iPhone or older iPhone, guess what? They both make calls, they both work. And uh, the new one might not fit in your pocket, so. Where do you think you find success against this guy, this hurricane that's going to come at you? Well, that's my will against his. When we get in there, it's, it's you know, unfortunately, like Sean Strickland says, uh, you know, we're going to do the man dance. And, uh, you know, when my will up against his, we'll see who starts to un unravel first. Somebody come to dancing, man, I'm here to kill somebody here. Yeah. It's the difference. I'm not dancing in the cage. I'm dying in the process. I come and smash your face, bro. Sorry. Hamza, you were meant to fight Paulo Costa, but do you believe Kamara is a harder fight for you? I don't care, man. Hard, easy, doesn't matter. Man, I'm here to win. To win. Smash that guy, take my money, be happy, do something else. You know. Do you believe by beating Kamaru it proves that you're already one of the best in the world even though you're just starting your career in earnest? What? Do you believe by beating Kamaru it proves that you're as good as everyone's been saying? Тебе не кажется, что если ты его побьёшь, то ты уже станешь ещё лучше, чем ты уже говоришь? I'm the best. Close for Alex. After your first fight, you said there were moments in there that you felt, upon rewatching, you know, you could have taken advantage of maybe to get the victory. So I'm curious, what are some of those moments, and are, how much of a change are you bringing into this against Islam? Oh, I mean, I've made it. I've already uh, put it out there. Obviously, I showed uh, Islam a lot of respect. It's well-deserved respect. You know, they've got a great team. He's a great fighter. So I showed him the respect, but uh, I believe uh, I can back myself a lot more this time. And, and as I've said, I've got no choice but to back myself. So I'm going full steam ahead, and that's one dangerous man when I'm doing that. Similar question for Islam. When you do re-watch the first fight, were there moments in there that you felt you could have taken advantage of and maybe you could have finished him in the first fight? Uh, you know, soon or later, this fight has to have to be happened because I won very much, and uh, Alex won very much. But last time, I beat him four rounds. Just last round, he won. I just give him change to last minute. But this fight, everything is gonna change. I want to finish him and finish all this talk about this fight. Going off of that, how much of the talk where fans, maybe they scored it for him, did that bother you? And is that the big reason why you wanted this rematch? Uh, no, it's not bothering me. I beat him already, but I want to smash everybody, you know? I want to finish everybody because everybody expects I finished him first time, but he's a strong, you know, he gave me good time there, hard time, and uh, I have many things before the fight, but here, 
everything on my side. I have time for the... What, what things? Get it out there. What things? Man, what, when the beginning event in Australia? When? Five in the morning? Well, five in the morning what? Well, you're, you're telling me 30-something hours. What time enough? we fight? What time? How many hours ten, do you need rehydration? AM. I need, oh, usually Mate, what I don't the need, hell? I don't need any of that. I I'll need, fight on zero need, hydration. You don't need nothing, just money. Everybody know why you come. You say, you say that I yeah, need how much? Tell, guys, tell the people how much more they give you for the took the fight. Hey? How much you make money? It's well deserved, mate. Don't worry about that. Uh -huh. But hey, hey. Now I'm you sick. understand. Mate, what do you mean? I'm here. Hey, I'm in my prime, as you can see, and I've got that dog in me. I don't know if you can see that, but I've got a nice dog. Yeah, prime so I'm ready to put on the show. Prime I back myself too. every single time. I don't Just make money, shut up and go home. You rely on, your, you rely on the, the hometown advantage. Ten extra hours rehydration. I back my skills, that's it. Question for Kamara. Come on, right here. Okay. At Media Day yesterday, Hamzat said, you know, mountain wrestling is superior to US wrestling. So I'm curious, what type of fight are you expecting from Hamzat if it does come to the wrestling in the octagon? Said what? He, he said that mountain wrestling would be US wrestling. So I'm curious, what do you expect from him on Saturday? I mean, we're not wrestling, you know, we're, we're fighting. So whether mountain wrestling or, or you know, Sweden wrestling, it doesn't matter. We're gonna step in there and we're gonna, uh, we're gonna mix it up. So I've already said it before, I might not be the best striker, I might not be the best grappler, but when it comes to mixing it up, I'm the best in the world. And I'm curious, Kamaro. That's why you have lost, yeah? What? That's why you lost twice or two, third time, I don't know. That's for what? You, wh why you, if you're the best, why you lost? Last two fights, you lost. Asking hey, it's shit happened. Huh? <laughs> this is life. But I guess uh, that's a lesson that you. That don't know. mean you best. Uh... I mean, I mean, like, if you're the best in the world, man, you have to, you, you can't lose the fight. Why are you losing the fight? You're right. You know, but uh, that's part of being human, and uh, that's a lesson I guess I have to teach you. Yeah, you're a good fighter, but not my level, man. I don't think so. You can teach me anything. You're too old for that, man. It's true. You can think that. Start to be a coach in the gym. It's better for you. It'll be healthy for you. I mean, start to be a coach. It's better for you. Maybe it'll be healthy for you. Uh, one last one for you, Dana. Uh, yeah. Obviously, fans were expected for the rematch with Islam and Charles. They were excited for Hamzat to fight Paolo. But given what we're seeing up on stage right now, are you se sensing more excitement for this rematch against Alex and this fight against Kamaru and Hamzat? Yeah, obviously. I mean, the, the buzz since we announced these fights is, is off the charts. I, again, I, I was saying this to these guys, that the, the two guys involved in the co-main, the two guys involved in the main is the reason that everybody in this building and everybody watching loves this sport. You know what I mean? These guys step up on short notice. Two, two of the biggest fights, number one in the world, welterweight, number four in the world, welterweight. The rematch everybody wanted to see, takes it on short notice. He takes it on short notice. What more could you ask for? Who's got the next question? Here, uh, this is for Alex and Islam. There's only been a handful of champion versus champion fights in UFC history. This is the first time there's ever been a rematch of champion versus champion. So what does it mean to the two of you guys to be part of this type of history? Alex, you can go first. Oh, it just shows, uh, I guess, how competitive it was. It lived up to that hype, you know, it was, uh, when it was uh, number one, number two going at it. Uh, and people wanted to see it. Uh, we both wanted it. And uh, it turned out it happens uh, this weekend. So uh, I'm excited. I'm sure everyone's in for a treat. First fight, the fight which one the everybody like. We show the good fight, like very competitive fight. And I give the chance to him last minute. That's why I told you guys soon or later. This fight has to be happen, and I'm really happy because it's happening in Abu Dhabi now. 
And I guess, Dana, similar thing for you. Uh, I know sometimes you're reluctant to let champions move up, depending on what they do, but to put this fight together twice in a row, just months apart, I know circumstances led to it, but um, just what does it mean for kind of the history of the sport? Yeah, no, I agree with Islam. This was a fight that needed to happen anyway. It was a fight that everybody wanted to see. And again, anybody can say what they want to say. The fact that Volkanovski came in on short notice to take this fight and was damn fired up to do it. And didn't waste any time, jumped on it, and then you make the call to Islam, and Islam accepts. Very, very rare that this happens. So I can't say enough about all the guys. But I, I just, every time you ask me, I'm going to tell you, everybody that's involved in the co-main and main event are the reason why we love fighting. This is, uh, Kevin Ioli called me the other day and was talking about this and, and the, the statement that Islam made about this fight and, and about taking this fight, and I said, you know, is there ever a better time than, than, than right now? The guys who hold belts, the guys who want the belts, it's just, it's incredible. I love this shit. Yeah. And Islam, going off that, that quote that you made, uh, you kind of referenced that at Media Day and took a little dig at John Jones, and he responded to you kind of taking the high road, and he challenged you to uh, kind of match some of his records and do big things in the sport in that regard. Uh, when you think about your future and your title reign, do you think you can accomplish that? Maybe double-digit title defenses, 10, 11, 12? Why not? Just put new belt, new opponents. I will beat everyone. I am going to beat all the records. Just, just to talk about that, too. When you talk about John Jones at that time when that happened, that's the other thing about this sport right now. Not only the fighters are they willing to step up, but the coaches. You know, a lot of these, th these guys go to their coaches and their coaching staff and say, you know, we're being offered this fight on short notice. John Jones coaches told them not to do it. The coaches that are involved in the game now here today are behind them 100% saying, yeah, we believe you're the best in the world. Let's absolutely take this fight. So the mentality between the camps, the fighters, everybody right now is completely different than it's been in the past. Nico Pajarillo from Fox Sports in Australia. This one firstly for Islam Makhachev. Islam, last time around in February in Perth, you said you wanted to show off your striking. You wanted to knock out Alexander Volkanovsky. What about this time around? What's the plan? But I try, brother, but this guy's so tough. I try, landed many good punches, but this time maybe, maybe some choke or something, but I will try to finish him, believe me. This one now for Alexander Volkanovsky. Volk, last time around there was a bit of trash talk. Australians don't have wrestling, etc. This time around there's been no mention of that. Why do you think that is? Oh, well, we got to settle that uh, in February, you know what I mean? So uh, that's done and dusted. Like I said, we're, we're doing it this weekend. Uh, all questions will be answered and the world gets to see it. And it's happening sooner rather than later and I'm pumped for it. Hamzat, salamu alaikum. Hamzat, can you tell us a bit about your relocation to Dubai? Obviously, you built an amazing life for yourself here. But what does that mean in terms of your training, your routines? And is there anything you miss about your old training environment? Man, I like this place, man. So every day, sun man, outside, not darkness, man. It makes you happy. Sun makes you happy and training. You know, so a lot of friends, a lot of brothers, and a lot of help from Abu Dhabi and these guys, you know. Feels at home, man. Uh, find my brothers and stay here, training here, and fighting for these guys. Uh, Dana, this next one's for you. Uh, Dana, what does Paolo Costa's future look like in the UFC, considering... Yeah, don't ask questions about he, that shit, man. Come on. Considering he pulled out yeah, of two. The guy went home, man. He shit himself, man. Oh, what would you ask about Paulo Costa? I didn't hear I, I assume. Need that guy here, man. It'll fuck him up, man. <laughs> listen, I can say this. I know this isn't a popular answer for him right now. But, listen, Paulo Costa could be a pain in the ass. No doubt about it. But he's seriously injured. Be honest, brother. He shit himself. That's why I'm running. <laughs> He's seriously injured and needs to get 
his elbow taken care of. He had a nasty hiding him out in the ho different hotels from me. It's legit. Listen, if it wasn't legit, I'd be the first one to say it. Absolutely legit that that guy is seriously injured and needed to do what he needed to do. Um, I know that is not a popular answer for Hamzat, but it's the truth. Thank you. Go ahead, sir. Right over here on the right. What do you got? Ислам, вопрос тебе. Ты сказал, что хочешь подраться с победителем пары Ковингтон и Эдвардса. А там же на очереди еще Билал Мухаммед. Ты с ним проводил кемп, он твой брат мусульманин. Готов ли уступить ему место и может ли быть провести бой с ним в случае чего? Question for Islam. Islam, you said that you would like to fight the winner of Leon Edwards and Covington, uh, but there's also Bilal Muhammad. He's in line to fight for the championship. He's one of the people that you did a camp with. He's your Muslim brother. Are you willing to let him go first and have a chance at a championship before you? I just say I won't, but I'm not making a decision. Ask this guy, he make a decision. I just want my chance because Two times I, got, I give the chance from guy from other division and I need my chance now. Как я говорил, да, я хочу шанс, я надеюсь, что Дэйна и UFC дадут мне этот шанс, но в принципе я уже дважды уступал место, я дважды давал шанс людям из другого из другого дивизиона драться со мной, поэтому мне кажется, что я тоже заслуживаю шанса подраться в другом дивизионе. А в случае чего готов возможен бой против Белала? Uh, is there a possibility of you fighting Bilal? For what? I need yes. the belt. Я нужен пояс. Thank you. Yeah, he's he's fighting him this weekend. <laughs> We're focused on him fighting him this weekend. Who knows what's going to happen after this fight? Who knows how this fight's going to play out? How's it going? How's it's going to go? Who's going? You can't answer those questions now, especially him sitting here thinking about him. Go ahead, sir. Afternoon, everyone. Hi, Dana. This question is for you. We've seen recently the announcement of DCT and the event that's going to happen in Saudi Arabia. So, the question for you is two parts. One, what is the UFC's vision for growth within the region? Obviously, now that we've got a Saudi event coming up. And two, what is the UFC's vision for growing and recruiting local talent who obviously are all lined up and dying to get into the organization? Yeah, so obviously we've been here in the region for a long time in Abu Dhabi and you've seen the sport explode here, get bigger, people training, athletes actually fighting in the UFC now that are from here. And uh, no, we're partners with DCT in Abu Dhabi. So we're going into Saudi Arabia, we're talking to uh, you know, Egypt, we're talking to uh, you know, Qatar, we're talking to a lot of different people in the region here and, and bringing uh, fight nights everywhere. But Abu Dhabi will always be home. Always be home. I'll, I'll, I'll never leave in Abu Dhabi. Good to see you. Thank you, Dynamo. Question for Hamzad. Over here. Tjena, brorsan. Läget. Varför har du dragit från Sverige? Är det för att svenskar är så jävla jobbiga? Är det någon annan anledning? För jag har också dragit. Tjena. Hej, jag har flyttat hit för att bli bättre träning. Allt passar bra för mig här. Sol. Det är inte depression varje där nio månader vinter fattar det. Jag älskar Stockholm med min stad så jag kommer gå till box, kommer fram till box och alltid, alltid kommer uppskatta den staden. Tack så mycket Amzat, uppskatta det. Lycka till. Go ahead sir. Sony Sports Sendia, question for Dena. Um, Dena, two years ago we interviewed you and you said that you need some Indian fighters. Now we have Anshul Jubli, and you recently signed uh, Pooja Tomer. <laughs> what do you have to say about the promise in Indian MMA? Yeah, listen. You know that I've been. I, I've been looking all over the world for fighters from every part of the world. So, uh, yeah, we, we've been excited about India and, and looking for talent throughout India, Asia, everywhere else. So, yeah, no, we're, we're very excited about it. Any plans for UFC India? What's I that? I can't fight there. I fight there before in India. I did fight there. Hamzat has uh, fought there. 
Any plans for you? Oh, to go to India? I uh, coming India. <laughs> we we eventually want to go everywhere. Hey, what's wrong with India? What's everybody shitting on India for? No, no. <laughs> I'm still in here. Uh, yes, sir. We will come to India. I don't know when. We we have no plan right now. But you know, you know, I want to go everywhere. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Go ahead, sir. Uh, John Bernard with KO Sports Australia. This one's for Islam. Volkanovsky said yesterday that if the roles were reversed, he could guarantee Islam wouldn't have taken this fight. Islam, if the roles were reversed, would you have taken this fight? Man, if you ask him, come to, to Abu Dhabi with his belt, he never come. What he lose here, Bren? Nothing. No win streak, no belt. I put everything, all risk, all risk in my side. That's why he come. He give him money, just, just come, that's it. But if you, if you see, tell him, hey, bring your belt and come, he never come to Abu Dhabi. Another one just for Dana. Dana, there's been some criticism this week of the pound for pound ranking. People like DC, Islam, who called it bullshit. Do you have any plans on changing the criteria for the pound for pound rankings? I don't make the criteria for the pound for pound rankings. The media does. The media votes who, who is the pound for pound best fighter in the world, who's number one, two, three, four in all the different weight classes. I, I, don't, uh, I don't handle that. Thank you. Thank you. Go ahead, sir. Santa Sports, Georgia, David Kuchvili. The question is for Alex Volkanovsky. Alex, if you beat Islam, would you rather fight him for the third time or you will go down to fight Ilya Tapuria, who is waiting for you for the long time? Yeah, well, uh... That's a, a big question. I want to do uh, January. I, I said I'm, I'm pretty much booked. I was booked for January. Obviously, I've got a job to do this weekend. I plan on winning on that, uh, winning that, and uh, we'll see what's next. But uh, I definitely want to be active. I proved that time and time again. So we'll see what happens uh, after I take that belt this weekend. И вопрос Исламу Махачеву. Ислам, если бы тебе позвонили за 11 дней и сказали бы, предложили бы подраться за пояс в полусреднем весе, например, с чемпионом, ты бы принял такой вызов? If you were called with 11 day notice and you were asked, for instance, to fight for a welterweight title, would you take that uh, opportunity? No. Смотри, мы не в одинаковых позициях. Я уже его побил, и он ничего не теряет. Он уже мне проигрывал. Он проиграл. Я это говорю не для шутки, что он приехал сюда зарабатывать деньги. Он просто, ему предложили чек, он приехал сюда. Он ничего не поставил на кон, он уже мне проигрывал. Победной серии нету и все остальное. Просто деньги у него. Если был бы я в таком же положении, и как он сто процентов принял бы, что там второй шанс, если мне дают? Look, there is absolutely nothing that Alex has at stake. He's already lost to me before. He's not putting his streak on the line. He's not putting his belt on the line. I'm not joking about it. He's only here for the money. He was asked to get some money, and he's here to get it. He's not losing anything, and if I was asked to do the same thing, and if I was in his position, I would come and I'd fight for the belt. No question about it. Go ahead. Question for Alexander. Volk, do you realize that in a Saturday night you will be fight with another Islam Makhachev? He will be stronger, he will be tougher than he was in Australia. Why? Because, uh, why? Because he is in a better shape hey? in February. Why are you telling me that uh, him rehydrating for 30 something hours isn't enough? He's going to be stronger with 40 hours? Is that really what we're relying on over here? You don't back your skills? I, I don't show, get it. I, show I don't get it. I, I back show. my skills. That's the difference. I, I really I don't get it. I show everything. You're going to show be what? Be patient. Be patient. I show you. Yeah, what's I show you my power and everything Saturday night. Oh, so you, you didn't have that power February? Yeah, I don't. Because you only had 30-something hours. Not 30. That wasn't not enough. Not 30, man. That's 30, 30 hours, man. mate. 30 no, hours. No, no, not 30. 30 hours, no, mate. No, no, no. You don't need time for I don't know what world you're living in, mate. I don't need more than 30 hours to rehydrate. Man, I wake up I'm a fighter. I will turn up and I back my skills. That's why I'm here today. You believe this. 12 days you believe no. this. Yeah, I'm the man. We'll man, see. Please. Go ahead, sir. Yeah, you. Hello, Mr. White. How are you? Questions for you. Very well, thank you. I know you guys are well acquainted with uh, Abu Dhabi at this point, but uh, what do the fighters do? What are they looking to do when they uh, have time off or after the fight? Are they looking to, uh, like, what do they like doing around town here in Abu Dhabi? 
What do they like seeing? Where do they like going? Is that for me? Uh, it, it's for anybody. It's for anybody. Do you guys have a schedule for the fighters in terms of uh, what they'd like to see in town? What are the fighters doing in Abu Dhabi after the fight? Do you have any kind of things planned for them to see when they're after the fight? Got it. I'm flying right home after the fight. Uh, I got shit to do. Uh, what are you guys up to? You guys sticking around? I, I think he's been here for like a month. Uh, these two just got here. He's been here for over a month. Uh, yeah, two months. What are you doing? You sticking around? You doing anything? He leaves Monday. What are you doing? You going home? Home, home. Yeah. Everybody's, I think everybody's going home. Thank you. Thanks very much. Thank Alex, you. go vacation with good money. Go ahead, sir. Вопрос Дани Вайту. Можно получить прогноз, затмит ли UFC 294 бой Фрэнсиса Нгану и Тайсона Фьюри? Question for Dana White. Do you think that this fight that we got, UFC 294, is going to make better numbers and going to be louder and better than the Francis Ngano versus Tyson Fury fight? <laughs> um, I would certainly hope so. <laughs> I would certainly hope so, yeah. I'm, yeah. I'm, listen, let, let's be honest, without smashing anybody here, these are the best fighters in the world in each weight class. That's what you want to see. I mean, you want to see the best fight the best. You know, these two right here and these two right here are the best. I would say yes, sir. But, I, but I'm pretty biased. И вопрос к Хамзату Чумаеву. Хамзат, ты почти всю пресс-конференцию находишься в телефоне. Есть ощущение, что тебе чуть-чуть скучно. А можешь рассказать, с кем ты переписываешься? Question for Hamzat Chimaev. Hamzat, pretty much the entire press conference, you're in your phone. It looks like you're texting somebody. You might be a bit bored. If it's not a secret, who are you texting? Well, with my brother Adam, she's in front of me, sent the picture, smiles, like, how fun, just how fun with my brother. <laughs> I don't know what to do, man. These guys, uh, before I met them, they was quiet. These guys making a lot of trash talk today, you know. So I just listen how fun, you know. So me and Usman have fun with watch these guys, man. It's amazing. Sometimes you give the job to somebody else, you know. It's good. Спасибо. You know, we've had the press conference for too long. When the question is, who are you texting on your phone? Anybody else have a question? I got, I got a question. Hasbullah, who are you backing this weekend? Are you back in this weekend? <laughs> All right. Hey, thanks for coming out today, Abu Dhabi. We're going to rip this stuff out of here and face these guys off. We'll see you tomorrow at the weigh-ins. Thank you. Breaking news, the lightweight challenger to Islam Makachev's throne, Charles Oliveira, is out of UFC 294, the fight that was scheduled for Abu Dhabi. But good news is, Oliveira out, Alexander Volkanovsky in. One phone call, he jumps in and, and he accepts the fight. Alex versus Islam, they did it in Australia, now it's in Abu Dhabi. What a rematch, what a time to do it. He comes in as a late replacement to do the most anticipated rematch ever. This is the type of stuff that makes you great. UFC 284, it was an incredible fight. A super fight for the ages between the top two pound for pound fighters in the world. A lot of people thought I was mad. Pound for pound number one, why are you going up? Oh, big stick with a left hand by Volkanovski. But high risk, high reward. Volk's got to be careful. And now he drops Volkanovski. Volk hits the floor with one knee. What a way to start the mega fight. Last time when we fought in Australia, it's hardest fight in my career. And he's really picking up the pace now. That's nice! But I landed very good punches. Oh! Counter left hand over the top. I pressure him, take him down. Oh, that's how you time a takedown. A lot of people thought as soon as he grabs a hold of me, game over. And I showed you that that wasn't the case. Have you ever heard a crowd like this? We got one more round, and it's still anybody's fight. Some people say this close fight because I give him some chance in the last minute. Oh! oh! Massive right hand. Huge land late in the fight for Volkanovski. Volkanovski 
Trying to seal the deal. Become a two-way division champion. What a fight. Alexander Volkanovski, to me, won the fight 3-2. In my mind, he won the fight. I think he did more damage. I thought Volk hold it off. No, Volkanovski did amazing. But Islam won the fight. The entire world is arguing over who won. He was hanging on for dear life. This is not true. Minimum, I won three rounds. The reality is, it was a close fight. After the last fight, we have many questions, but I will give all answers in Abu Dhabi. Oh! Knockout from the Kasha! This is not Australia. This is my second home. Oh, Arena is going to be on my side, and I will defend my belt. I've got tunnel vision of what I need to do. I'm going in for the kill from the get-go, and I'm going to make it happen. I took this fight knowing that there's still a lot to lose, but there is still so much to gain. First round, second round, if I have some small chance, I will finish him and make people understand my level. Islam Akashem, the best in the world! He still remembers what happened the last fight. He still remembers being there the last round, begging for that bell to ring. He remembers that. I don't want to give him any chance. I will make him sleep or knock him out. 11 days notice, all the odds stacked against you. If there's anyone that can go out there and shock the world, it's me.